there's a lot of pieces involved in scuba equipment and it can be kind of overwhelming. So if you're at a loss of where to start, I'm here to help. Hey guys, if you're new here, my name's Olivia. I'm a professional scuba diver. And today we're going to talk about what order you should buy your scuba equipment in. So let's dive right in. First is your mask, fin, and snorkel. This is the core of your scuba equipment. If you're already certified, you likely already have this piece of equipment because it's not generally included in the price of your basic open water course. If you don't already have your mask, fin, and snorkel, then that's what you need to get first. I have a whole video where I break down how to pick out the right mask, fin, and snorkel for you. So if you wanna go into further detail on how to pick those three things, um, then I will link that video down below as well as in the cards above if I can figure out how to link a video in the cards above. I'm sure I can figure it out. Like this video if I figure it out. Dislike this video if I didn't figure it out. <laughs> Either way, subscribe. The second piece of gear that you should purchase is your computer. So your computer holds the most crucial information about your dive, so it's absolutely critical that you know how to use it. So when you get your computer, make sure that you read that instruction manual. I always look up any videos I can find about the computer um, and watch those. And then also a really great thing to do is uh, hop into a pool or a very calm, like controlled, um, shallow, body of water where you can practice with it. You need to know how to use it. It's so important that you know how to use your computer. You know everything about it before you go jump off the side of a boat in the middle of the ocean. As a side note, if you have to rent a computer, take some time to sit down with that computer and practice with it before your dive. Oh, the next piece that's important about your computer is that it's your log book. If you use a rental computer, you don't have record of your dives other than handwriting it but pulling those dives directly from your computer. My dive log shows me my entire dive profile. Um, mine's air integrated, so it also shows me my starting and end pressure. I can drop a pin on my location so it knows the exact um, pinpoint that I dove at. I can write notes, all sorts of things. So it's like an amped up dive log. So that's a huge added bonus. Next up is your wetsuit, all right? so. A couple things about your wetsuit. The first thing is that it fits properly. So the point of the wetsuit is that it keeps you warm. Now this works because the wetsuit is tight to your body and as the water rushes in, um, it traps that water against your body and then your body heats that water, which then keeps you warm. Now if you have fresh, cold, cold or colder than your body water running in and out of your suit, it's not going to keep you warm, therefore, the function of it is pointless. So having your own wetsuit fits you properly, you know you're going to be adequately warm for your dives. The second plus to owning your own wetsuit is that you know that you're the only one who's peed in it. I know that sounds gross and you can be one of those people that says that you don't pee in your wetsuit, but the reality of it is, is that a rental wetsuit gets peed in a lot and by a lot of different people. So if you want to be the only pee in your wetsuit, own your own. The next thing is your regulator. Rental regulators are usually the very standard no bells and whistles style. So if you have your own regulator, you can pick one that breathes really easily. You can pick one that is really lightweight. You can pick one that is designed for warm and cold water diving or you can pick whatever suits your diving needs. Whereas when you have a rental, you get what you get. Additionally, when you own a regulator, you are the one that's in charge of servicing it. You are the one who's in charge of it altogether. So you know that it's being well taken care of. You know that it's been serviced. You know that it's clean. All those things you're in charge of, so you know. Also, especially with how things are right now, when you have your own regulator, you know that you are the only one swapping spit with that regulator. Um, when you use a rental, there's been a lot of mouths on it, a lot of people breathing off of it. So having your own regulator means it's just your mouth, just your spit, just your germs. You don't have to worry about introducing other people's bacteria into your mouth. Side note about that, if you do have to rent a regulator, 
you can bring your own mouthpiece and have them swap out the mouthpiece so at least that piece has not had other people's mouths on it. And that's something that you can do pre-COVID, during COVID, post-COVID. Um, if that's something that you are more comfortable with and you have to rent a regulator down the line, that's always an option, always has been an option. It's not a big deal. It's really not that hard to change out a mouthpiece. It's just a quick zip tie attachment. So, so if that's something that you didn't know before, now you know. Last but not least is your BCD. So first of all, knowing the functionality of your BCD is super important, especially in emergency situations. There can be a lot of variation with the setup of a BCD. Um, so being familiar with where everything's located on your jacket and how it works and um, being able to just easily get to where you need to get to do what you need to do with your jacket is super important for not only emergencies, but just making your dive a nice, smooth um, and enjoyable experience. And not only do you need to know and be comfortable with the functionality and the location of everything on your jacket, but make sure that you also know um, what's going on on your buddy's jacket, because that's super important too. Because remember, you and your dive buddy are kind of uh, in charge of each other as far as safety goes. So if you guys are both getting rental equipment everywhere you go and you have to learn not only one, but two BCDs constantly, and that takes time. And if you're on vacation and you're on a trip and you're trying to enjoy yourself, maybe you're not trying to learn a whole new BCD setup before a dive. So keep that in mind. That's a huge plus of having your own equipment. Again, rental gear is gonna be your very like basic equipment. Um, so that might mean that it's ill-fitting for you, in which case that can cause a lot of problems for comfortability and also buoyancy during your dive. Um, so if you own your BCD that fits you and is comfortable for you, then you don't have to worry about that during your dive. Again, worry about the dive, not your gear, you know? The point of the dive is for you to enjoy the dive, not be fumbling with your gear, struggling with your buoyancy. So there's a lot of BCDs that have come out recently where you can actually swap out and interchange different pieces to make it incredibly like almost customized for you and what works for you and what fits you. There's also BCDs that are great for travel. There's also BCDs that are made specifically for women. There's all different styles and kinds of BCDs. Um, so you wanna get to pick the one that's right for the kind of diving that you're doing. And if you have a rental, you just get what you get. All right, well, that's everything. I hope that helped guide you on your journey to buying yourself some scuba gear. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and subscribe if you haven't. You can also find me on Instagram at Fully Submerged Scuba. If you have any other questions about diving, please comment them down below and I'll see you guys next time until we dive again. Bye. I don't even know it's on this side. Is it on this side? I have no idea. Skirt, skirt, skirt.